Looking at video games as a whole, it's easy to see inspirations from Greco-Roman, Norse, and medieval English mythologies. I'd suggest that these three traditions form the basis of mythological, legendary, and spiritual motifs in video games today, but we can even test that theory with the subject of this video, mana. By the way, if you're still saying mana and not mana, please stop, Dad, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. I'll explain why mana is the correct pronunciation of the concept later in this video, but back to our test. Anyone familiar with video games, particularly RPGs, will be familiar with mana as a concept, typically representing magic. But let's focus our approach by examining the mana series. Beginning with Final Fantasy Adventure, aka Seiken Densetsu Final Fantasy Gaiden, this series crafted a world of legend and enchantment, a new mythos developed around the concept of Excalibur, a new universe which spun off from Final Fantasy, distinguishing itself with its early action RPG gameplay. Don't listen to any revisionists who tell you that they didn't have the technology back then to create action RPGs. Mana was only one of many ARPGs at the time, some of which pioneered the subgenre years earlier. Mana was a hit, developing its own lineage of games like Legend of Mana, Sword of Mana, Trials of Mana, Children of Mana, Mana 2 the Electric Boogaloo, Mana the Squeakle, and Land Before Mana the Great Valley Adventure. As the Mana series continued to unfold, its legendarium accumulated recurring imagery, such as the Seeking of the Holy Sword. But at the center of the Mana world stands a majestic, towering symbol, the emblem of its emphasis upon natural forces, nature with a capital N, indeed personified into a mystical monument of life and source of all magic, the Mana Tree. When I say personified, I mean literally. The first Mana Tree was formed of a feminine creation deity who then became the wooded allegory of balance herself, taking on the form of the very first tree. If and when the tree dies, someone else must become the new sapling for the next one. This is the seed of mana, or the Gemma, defended by the Gemma Knights who take up the mana sword. Thus, the balance of nature continues with new generations of the mana tree in a natural cycle of life and death. If you're wondering what the secret of mana actually is, at least in the game that bears the title, this is it. The Mana Tree in Secret of Mana was once the wife of the original Mana Knight and the mother of Randy, the hero of that game. Mom being a tree would be a pretty big secret, and wow would it be awkward at Thanksgiving. Anyway, here's your test. Confronted with the tranquil image of the enormous Mana Tree spreading its boughs up into the heavens, did you immediately think of Yggdrasil, the iconic world tree of Norse cosmology? It's alright. Nobody could blame you for it. Again, a vast majority of video games and indeed stories told by our species are based on traditions like those belonging to Scandinavian ancestry. However, I want to take the opportunity to direct you from lands of crushing ice and dark waters in the north to the Blue Pacific and its own oceanic settlers who somehow populated the tiny, isolated island land masses in the largest, longest seaborne migration in history. For that is the realm from which this term mana derives. The great secret of mana is that the West has so much more to offer than the beliefs of only a few cultures, as wonderfully historied and textured and rich as they are. This has nothing to do with any inadequacy or inferiority of Norse myth. It has everything to do with elevating other cultural traditions into renown. Forgotten on the global stage are visions of mana that trace Polynesian origins of the term. Our goal here is discovering, or more specifically, rediscovering these beliefs, for they have long since been upheld by oral traditions of chant and music and dance for generations in their native lands by a seafaring people who crossed vast distances of open ocean with naught but wood and weaving, without modern device, and little more than a knowledge of the stars to guide them. Now this personally means a lot to me. I'm native Hawaiian, but I didn't appreciate the cultural, artistic, and spiritual heritage at all when I was young. Only recently have I spent time learning more about Hawaiian beliefs and history, and frankly, it's left me shocked and horrified. 
From the fires of Lahaina that ravaged a community, destroyed museum artifacts, historical testaments, and irreplaceable art, to the predatory land grabs and conspiracy theorists ready to capitalize on a disaster. From the decimated wreck of the island of Koho'olawe, bombed and bombarded by the U.S. military for years, to the usurpation by American businessmen of the Hawaiian kingdom and the tragic fates of the last king and queen of Hawaii, to the great exodus of Hawaiians priced out of living in their own homeland, to the near extinction that they came to when at the turn of the 20th century their population had declined by 73.7%. And the hardest part is it seems like nobody cares. Hawaii is, after all, so beautiful. What a paradise! How can one think of history's past atrocities on a sunlit beach of warm white sands? A legacy of sadness has been sufficiently replaced for the tourist trade with a facade of saccharine, sugary, California surfer dude culture, tiki bars, and those little umbrellas in your drink. Just to make sure you're extra uncomfortable, let me remind you that religion had some part to play in all this. In so bringing the word of God to natives that some saw as subhuman, the Hawaiian language was preserved in written form for the first time, while subsequently the names of natives who converted and the ancient stories they told were eradicated. A bitter and unnecessary cultural cleansing alongside the introduction of the gospel of Christ after the brutally punishing traditional kapu tabu system. Behold not with anger the sins of men, but forgive and cleanse. It's impossible to make good and bad generalizations in my opinion. Hawaiian history is a balancing act of colonization and preservation, even as some missionaries were embraced as heroes for establishing care for lepers on Molokai, while others absolutely represented a notion of Western imperialism. Beyond religious motivations, governmental and financial interests quickly transformed the islands into a new world entirely. For the sake of Gamologica, though, it's the stories and the loss of stories that most concerns me. That's part of what Gamologica is for, and it's why I'm interested in the traditions of cultures all around the world. Stories need to be told and retold to each new generation, or they become lost. Today, talking story in Hawaii means having a friendly chat. For the indigenous Hawaiians of a bygone age, stories or mo'olelo were part of the social and spiritual tapestry of the culture. It's sometimes said that video games are the only interactive art form, and I can test that suggestion with a concept of dance. The Greeks had their dramas, the Norse had their Eddas, the English have their sagas and their matters, the Hawaiians have hula kahiko. In a society with a purely oral language, hula played a crucial role in passing down knowledge and tradition. This ancient mode of expression involved the whole body, an activity which required immense mental and physical stamina, power, strength, elegance, grace, and soul. Each gesture of the hands, touch of the foot, sway of the hips, arch of the arms, turn of the head, portrays a concept embedded in the overall story of the dance. Hula was so integral to their belief system and way of life that the native Hawaiians personified dance in their pantheon of gods and ancestral spirits. Laka is the goddess of hula and of the forest, a guardian over all the flora that grew upon the islands. Her name expresses gentleness and attraction. She is the lady of the dance, the inspiration of hula, moving through the performer's body as they move. The origins of hula are shrouded in mystery and legend, but one tale describes Laka as having learned hula at Mauna Loa Molokai. From there, she carried it to the other islands, and not just those in the Hawaiian chain, but further across the Pacific, where she is known by other names. Fortunately, hula as a cultural tradition and expression has gained a resurgence in Hawaii, recovering from a time when it was officially banned as a pagan practice. Today, hula can be used to tell any story. I've been to churches where hula is invited as part of the service. But within the oldest stories, and indeed central to the perspective which recited them, was this concept of mana. Now that's not mana, as I mentioned earlier. Mana with two ends is the bread from heaven that miraculously fed the children of Israel after their freedom from enslavement under Egypt 
as found in the Pentateuch's book of Exodus. Mana isn't like manna, the bread. Mana is a Polynesian term. Mana was a word shared not just between Hawaiians, but across oceanic cultures. It's sometimes said, Hawaiians had no word for religion. That is, no exact counterpart to the English term exists, but ho'omana was the act of causing to create or increase mana, and indeed a spiritual term that was used. As such, mana was not an explicitly religious term analogous to something like the Holy Ghost or the Chinese key or even New Age universe life force type stuff. Rather, it was a way to describe what the Hawaiians perceived as the spirituality of the universe around them, so that everything partook of and gave back mana, from the river feeding the trees that fed the birds of the air, to your neighbors and their children receiving sustenance from the ocean's fish. Mana makes no distinction between the natural and the supernatural if it asserts that everything is in possession of it. And it was under this belief that they cultivated the earth and treated the natural world as sacred. Short of personhood, mana was like a kind of independent existence force. Even words were believed to hold mana once spoken. However, mana could be described also in terms of power and charisma. The ability to control not just the world around a person through the accumulation of this energy, but to control people. Hawaiian royalty was believed to have a special relationship to mana. The highest drinking families were those who were most directly descended from the gods, those chiefly families who kept their bloodline so pure that the mana of their godly ancestors, the power that motivates everything in the universe, might flow uninterrupted to them and through them to the benefit of all their subjects. David Kalakaua, last king of Hawaii, fascinatingly tracks the history of the Hawaiian people through oral traditions stretching back generations, indeed thousands of years, in his book, The Legends and Myths of Hawaii, The Fables and Folklore of a Strange People. He wrote, The traditions of the period are so meager as to leave the impression that it was one of uninterrupted peace, little having been preserved beyond the genealogies of the governing chiefs. But... Late in the 10th or early in the beginning of the 11th century, the Hawaiians were aroused from their dream of more than four centuries. The peace and isolation that Hawaiians knew under their own trees of mana would eventually come to an end. But not just from white western visitors in their sailing ships, their dreamlike peace was broken by a conqueror, a prophesied king the greatest military leader that the thin and fading memories of their history had ever known, the man who created the kingdom of Hawaii. To hear his story, you'll have to come back next time. The first king of Hawaii to unify the children of Mana, the last human sacrifice. That is a story for another day. If you learned something, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. If you want to see more micro-documentaries like this one, consider making a small monthly donation at patreon.com forward slash Gamelogica. Let us know in the comments what topic you want to see Gamelogica explore along the crossroads between video games, myth, spirituality, and religion. Fidem Fabula Ludos. See you next time.